tonight, turn with us to the book of Job, chapter 32. Job, chapter 32. Amen. Just thank the Lord. I tell you what, I'm not complaining about 70 degrees the end of December. Mm -hmm. Even if we do pay for it in February, we'll take what we got yeah. right now. Oh, yeah. Amen. Job chapter 32, I'm just going to read one verse. And these are the words of Elihu. Now, Job and his friend, Job's friends that he gathered with him, they've been... Uh, having this dialogue between themselves and in chapter 32 the three men uh, didn't even know what to say to Job and Elihu who I think was probably the youngest among them uh, makes a, some statements here but I want to pull out just one verse Job chapter 32 verse number 7 when Elihu said, I said, days should speak, and multitude of years should teach wisdom. One more time. He said, I said, days should speak, and multitude of years should teach wisdom. I want to think on a thought just for a few minutes tonight. The words he said in verse 7, days should speak. Days should speak should speak. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen? I think even though those are few words, those few words are have a great impact in our life if we would think about them. Elihu, Elihu says, I said days should speak and multitude of years should speak, should teach wisdom. When we think about days should speak, what he is saying there is that we live life. And many times as a child, it seems like time just drags by. It takes forever for Christmas to get here. Amen? And the first of December rolls around with you when you're a child and you know that Christmas is coming. It seems like it takes six months for it to get here. But now when you're an adult and you enter in December, Christmas is over before you even have time seemingly to prepare for it. We live our life and uh, and as we age and go through different seasons of age in our life, the way that we spend our days, we don't think about it so much, but as we get older, days seem to be more important to us. And we begin to think back. And we would many times, it's probably come out of all of our mouths, if I'd known this when I was younger, right. if I'd had the knowledge now, then, that I have now, things would have been a lot different. Throughout the Word of God, there are many great days that are recorded, such as the day of creation, when God brought all things into existence, the day of atonement in the days of ancient Israel, the day of Pentecost in the early years of the church, the day of the Lord. But tonight I want to talk about three days in this message, thinking about Elihu's words. Days should speak. Our days should speak to us. We should not just be living life from day to day without a thought, without a care, without remembering yesterday, without planning for tomorrow. Whether you know it or not, these days speak very clearly to us and they give us great, uh, 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 they give us great knowledge that we can prepare for the days of tomorrow, and we would do, uh, we would fare much better if we would give heed to their advice. So I want to think about these three days, and the first day I want to talk about is yesterday. Elihu said, "Days should speak, or yesterday should speak unto us today. Yesterday speaks to us and saying that I am gone." And you should learn of me because I'll never be back. You'll never have the opportunity today or tomorrow to do what you should have done yesterday. We can't recall back yesterday. There's no way to get back to yesterday. You can't go back and fix the mistakes of yesterday. You can do better today, but you can't fix what you done yesterday. You can't fix the problems of yesterday's. It would be nice, and I believe all of us, 
Maybe have some things in our past that we would like to undo or we would like to redo or maybe not do it all. But there's no option for that because it is impossible. The door is closed and the yesterday is the unreachable past and it is gone forever, never to be able to be redone again. But even though we cannot relive yesterday, the Lord would have us to remember our mistakes and to be able to learn from them. Some of us, if not most of us, have failed many times, probably just in this past year. But let us learn from these mistakes and the misunderstandings of yesterday and profit from them rather than making 2022 a recap of 2021. I think God wants us to learn. I don't think God beats us down in our mistakes. He don't beat us down in our sin, but he allows us the opportunity to remember them. He allows yesterday to speak to us today that we don't do today what we did wrong yesterday. Amen? Amen. We need to think of the senseless fighting of our own battles. They say that experience is the best teacher. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches in John chapter 15. And he said, he that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit for without me, you can do nothing. And we need to understand and know we may have tried it yesterday without the Lord, but today we need to learn from yesterday that we need the Lord in our life today. Paul said, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. We may not have known that yesterday, but today we have the knowledge. We recognize our failures of yesterday, so today let us take the knowledge that Jesus is with us. Help is available at all times. The Spirit of the living God is there for us today. We not only need His help, but we must have His help if we're going to make it today. Amen? Amen. I thought about uh, the, the battle of the... Um, uh, in Alaska, I forget the name of the owls there, and um, Atu, I think, was the owl. I watched this soldier. He wanted to, to be in the war in Germany. He lived in Austria, and he left when the German Germans took up occupation, and they uh, he went into training for several years, and they ended up sending him to the Battle of Alaska uh, for the islands there against the Japanese, and he was... Uh, 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 in a uh, submarine crew, and they were scouts. They were to go to uh, get on this island, and they were supposed to come around the back, and when the American uh, battleships would come in uh, with the uh, unload soldiers, they would come on one side of the island. These scouts would be coming from the bank to keep the Japanese from being able to escape. Well, once they got there, the, the hill terrain was just horrific. Many of them had to drop much of their, their load, their pack, their food, just to get through the mountainous regions. And uh, many of them died along the way. And the Japanese opened up fire, and it was just horrific. The guy said it was just horrible. They lit fire on us and uh, lit into firing upon us. And many of our men died, and it was long, and it was cold, and through the night. And they were waiting for the 17th Army to, to show up. And... Uh, He's like, where are they at? Out there on their own in, in the starless nights, cold in the Alaskan islands. But he said as dawn began to, to rise and the fog began to come up off the mountain, he said, I look, and he said, we were surrounded by the 17th Division. The army, the, the Marines had shown up. They were there to save the day. Can I tell you, it might be a long, cold night on the Alaskan island, but I can tell you there's more for us than me against it. God will help us through our trying times. He is there to be with us today. Amen. Amen. I believe his help is available at all times. Jesus said, with men it may be impossible, but with God all things are possible. John declared in his first epistle, he said, you are of God, little children, and you have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen? Amen. We need to learn that victorious Christian living comes by daily prayer and daily reading of God's word. When we pray, we talk to God. When we read his word, God talks to us. There's a lot of a lot of people that spend time saying prayers throughout the day, but they never pick up the word of God. There's people that pick up the word and read it like a book, but they never pray. But you see, when we pray, we're speaking to God, and when we read his words, he's conversing to us. That's how we know the will of God in our lives. 
So we may not have done it yesterday, but the days speak. The days are speaking to us. Let's not live in our failures. Let's not live in our weaknesses. Let's not live tomorrow what we lived yesterday. Let the day speak. Let yesterday speak to us how that we can have a better day today. Amen. Amen. The psalmist declares in Psalms chapter 1, his delight, the, the, the person of God, his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And if he does that, he'll be like a tree planted down by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaves shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I want to prosper, don't you? I'm not talking about money in the bank and the the. the tangible things like that but I'm talking about prospering in my soul I tell you money can't buy those things to be able to get up and know that you're right with God and know that God's on your side and he's walking with you today amen, amen. Job said I have, I have esteemed your words more than my necessary food think about that Job said it, it was as much as important to me to read God's word as it was to eat my scrambled eggs and toast of the morning that's what he's saying we remember it correctly. Our happiest moments is when we're obeying and trusting God and living for Him. When we get in trouble and we get heartbroken is when we drift away from God and try to live life without consulting Him in our life. Following God afar off is a miserable life. Amen? Amen. We need to remember the lukewarm, half-hearted times we walked away from God's presence and remember happy is the people whose God is the Lord. Finally, when we've learned from our mistakes and failures and learned by our experiences and learned and have experienced his forgiveness and his love, we need to learn to move on. Nothing to gain by dwelling and mulling around in the failures of yesterday. You don't gain nothing. You, we need to remember them. We need to learn from them. We need to grow by them. But we don't need to lay around and waller in the mire of yesterday's failures. Amen. Amen. Paul wrote to the Philippian church and he said, Brethren, I count myself not to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth to the things which are before. Yesterday speaks. Think of me. Learn of me. But you can't stay here. Elihu said, I said, days shall speak. We need to let yesterday speak to us. Amen? Amen? Yesterday speaks and says you can't come back. There's a lot of yesterdays I would like to relive just one more time. Tyler died on a Monday night. The Sunday before was the last time I saw him standing in this vestibule. Amen. I hugged the fire out of him. We had a council meeting and I remember rushing off. I didn't want to leave him. I wanted to invite him out to eat but I had to rush off to the council meeting and I thought if I, if I, if I had known right. and I had it to do over, I'd say, boys, meet without me. I'm taking this boy out to eat today because it'd be the last. But we don't know those things. Right. So we have to take yesterday and we need to learn from them. We need to learn. And I try to, I'm, I'm trying to learn this. I'm trying to teach myself this because I, I get, uh, I try to do 14 things at one time. And when we leave on Sunday morning, I try to, Shake hands with each person and, and be personable with each person. Many times people have something to say or something to share on the way out the door. But I've got 50 people going out the door trying, and I'm trying to keep up. And many times I've went home and I thought they were trying to tell me something and somebody else shook my hand and I ignored them and they walked away. I didn't mean to do that. But I'm trying to learn that we've got to slow down a little bit. Right. Care about what's going on today. Folks, it, it, today will take care for itself. Amen? Amen? So yesterday says you can't live here. you got to move on. But you need to learn from what you did right. yesterday. But today says, I'm here. You can use me today. You may not have been able to do it yesterday. You may not have thought about it yesterday because yesterday is gone. There's no way to bring it back. There's no way to you to get back to it. There's no profit in grieving over your failures and to where you can't do anything. Maybe you've said something to yourself like this. If only it would have went like this or that. Just like I said, what if I'd done this or that? But you remember old Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Yeah. Humpty Dumpty. Had a great fall. And all the king's horses and all the king's men, remember they couldn't put Humpty Dumpty 
back together again. You can't change yesterday. I'm not calling you Humpty Dumpty. But I'm telling you, some of us, all of us at some time, we can remember times we fell off the wall. Amen? You can't change the things that happened yesterday. Yesterday's finished. Yesterday's over. But we have the blessing of today. We need to use it. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, he said, For he saith, I have heard of thee in accepted time, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The emphasis is on the word now. Talking about today, God said it through the prophet Isaiah. He said, come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they can be white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, they can be as wool. Today speaks loud and clear. I'm going to be gone before that you know that you need to use me wisely before I become yesterday. We should use today for Bible study and prayer. Have you read your Bible at all today? Oh, yeah. Have you prayed at all today? You'd be surprised at folks that come to church on Sunday that never open their book. The only Bible verse they hear through the all week is what the preacher reads in the pulpit on Sunday morning. We can't make up for tomorrow. It's important that we do the things today that we failed to do yesterday. Amen? Amen. Most importantly, we need the direction and the guidance that this word gives us. I don't know where to turn sometimes. I don't know what the answer is sometimes. You can't go to school for some of this stuff, but you'll learn it through the word of God. God's spirit illuminating his word will give us direction for our life. Amen? Yeah. We ought to take advantage of today. Do good things to other people when that it's in our care, when when that it's in our possession. They, many times I'll go through Walmart, they just a little black fellow, he got the long hair, and, uh, but, you know, some mornings I go through, they throw the food out, don't say thank you, kiss my foot or nothing. And, uh, and I'm like, well, you have a great day, you know. And, uh, but this guy is just exceptionally nice, you know. And uh, so a few a week or two before Christmas, whatever, I drove through there. And, and he had me, and he's always very polite. And I hand him a little bit of money. I said, Merry Christmas. He said, oh, you, no, no, you don't. I, are you sure? I said, Merry Christmas, buddy. I said, you do a great job around here. And I said, you deserve to be complimented. It's all right to be good to people. Amen. It's all right to be good to people. We need to take advantage of today and do good things. That don't mean you have to go around giving away money, but whatever's in your possession to do. Sometimes it's just a pat on the back, say, hey, I'm praying for you. Sometimes it's just a text to say that I, you crossed my mind today, letting you know I get text all the time at 5 o'clock in the morning from preacher friends of mine. Hey, buddy, just letting you know I'm praying for you today. And you know what I do is I take those, I take days as well, and there's some mornings at 4, 30, 5 o'clock, I'll send them a text. Hey, praying for you and your family. That's good to know. You might be struggling one day, but to get a text from somebody say, you're on my mind, I'm praying for you, lifting you up in prayer, let us use today. Let us use today to do good works to people. Let us use today to praise the Lord. There shouldn't be a day go through our life that we don't tell the Lord that we love Him. That we all got to lift up our hands and say praise the Lord. I remember when we was uh, sick with all this stuff going on a few months ago and uh, I didn't have much problem except for one and a half days. I ran a pretty high fever and I felt pretty strongly. And, uh, but even while I was just feeling sick as a dog, I thought, Lord, Boy, I just tell you I love you. We'll get through this. Just touch this old body, but I want you to know that I love you. Amen. We ought to use today wisely in praising the Lord because he's worthy of our praise today. Amen. Amen. There's so much noise in the church today, but so little praise. People become spiritually anemic. They're like the lukewarm, careless about their relationship with the Lord. They're uh, going about busy about everything else in their life, but they... They're careless about their relationship with God. That ought to be the most important thing in our life. I tell you, if we fix our relationship with the Lord, it'll fix our relationship with other people. If we fix our relationship with the Lord, it'll fix a lot of things going on 
in our life. The psalmist said it like this. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon the earth. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. We are to praise him for keeping us safe. We are to praise him for healing us when we were sick. We are to praise him for giving us direction when we didn't know where to go. And he told us the right way and it worked out for us. We are to praise him to be walking around in church on Wednesday than laying in a hospital bed. We are to praise him for his goodness for he's worthy of it today. Amen? So use today before it becomes tomorrow and we have to look back and say I should have praised him. I should have thanked him. I should have been thankful. I should have had I had the opportunity to help this person but I passed it up. Now yesterday speaks. I'm gone. Today speaks. Do it today. Use me today. It's available today. But I think also that tomorrow speaks. Tomorrow says don't worry and fret about me. Don't spend your life in anxiety and nervousness about me because you can trust me with God. That's why I don't worry about tomorrow. That's why I don't sit around. I know bad things are going to happen. They're going to happen to us as long as we're alive. We're going to have good days, going to have bad days. I don't know what's going to happen in three weeks from now. Maybe something horrific in my life. I don't know, but I'm going to trust it to God today. I can't do nothing about yesterday. I can't do anything about tomorrow, but I can put my trust in the Lord. Amen. Many folks worry and fret about the future. They see it dark and without hope. And it's true that we live in a day of uncertainty, things going on in our country and around the world today, wickedness and utter confusion going on around our world today that Jesus said would come upon us in Luke chapter 21. He said there'll be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars upon the earth, distress of nations and perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking on the things which are coming upon the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Paul tells us in, in the book of Timothy, this know also in the last days perilous times shall come and he tells us all the dreadful things that will come in the, in the end times and tomorrow speaks many times of darkness and dread that is ahead. Hallelujah to God today. But can I tell you, tomorrow is in the hands of God and we're the people of God. He'll see us through even the worst of times. Amen? Amen. Reminded of John the Revelator when he was thrown on the Isle of Patmos to die. The Bible said that he heard a voice behind him and the voice spoke to him and it was like Many running waters, he said. And when John sees the glorified Christ, the Bible said that he fell on his face like he was dead. Hallelujah to God. And the Bible said that he felt Jesus laid his right hand upon him. And he said, fear not, John, for I am the first and the last. That tells me he's yesterday and tomorrow. Amen. I'm the first and the last. The beginning and the end. Hallelujah to God. And he said I've got the keys of hell and of death. Thank God today yesterday is past. I've got to learn from it. Today is here. I'm going to work while it's day and do the things for God and praise God today. But I'm going to trust God with my future. Trust him because God is already in my tomorrows. Amen. He's already there. There's battles to fight, but the same God, amen, that helped us in the days gone by will help us today, and he'll help us tomorrow. Scripture declares in Hebrews, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And, of course, the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans says, What shall we say to these things then? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. What about these powerful words Paul wrote in Romans chapter 8? Nay, in all these things we are more. What things? These bad things that happens in lives. These troublesome things. These things that try to wrestle our mind and try to distress our mind. Paul said we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I'm persuaded that neither death nor life or angels or principalities, powers, things present, things to come, height nor depth or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The days do speak but we need to listen. We need to listen to yesterday and learn from it. We need to praise and do what we can today and be ready for tomorrow because as bad as some of tomorrow may be, there's going to be a day that Jesus is coming back with the sound of a trumpet to gather yeah. his people home today. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Y'all a little lively for a small crowd yeah. tonight. 
People on YouTube think we got a full house. The days do speak. We just need to listen. We just need to listen. We need to hear Paul's advice when he says, forgetting the things which are behind and reach for the things that are before us. What he's saying is, not that we shouldn't learn from yesterday, but don't lay in water in your, you can't fix your mistakes. You've done made them. Amen. Give them to the Lord. Amen. Get forgiveness if that's the case and do something. You can't undo yesterday. Amen. There's a lot of things that I wish I could undo, but you can't do undo yesterday. It's gone. It'll never be here again. If you miss the opportunity, chalk it up as missed because it can't. It ain't coming back. But I tell you what, I'm going to make a note today not to do what I did yesterday. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to make a note today to do some things I should have done yesterday that I didn't do. Amen. Elihu said, I said the days shall speak. Our days are speaking to us in our life every day. We, many of us... It, when you get up in the morning, you lay down at night, thoughts flood your mind. We think about yesterday. We think about years ago. We think about tomorrow. The days are speaking. Elihu and Bildad the Shuite and, and Eliphaz the Nemethite and all, all the friends uh, may not have been the best friends in the world to Job. And some of the things they did, said may not have been exactly theologically correct. But Elihu was right when he said, days shall speak. Our days speak to us whether we realize it or not. It's what we do with that. We can't remedy the past, but we can make our path straight today and do the work that God has given us to do today. Amen? Amen? Thank God for the experiences of yesterday. Sometimes I think back, some of my greatest days was in my um, early 20s, late teens, 19, 20, 21, in, the, in those uh, it was just great experiences for me. I spent a lot of time. Uh, the preacher gave me a key to the church and uh, ended up becoming the district youth pastor. But before I got into all that, uh, he gave me a key to the church and I would go down and I would lock myself in the church and I'd go down in the basement and I would start praying. And within 20 minutes, I was praying as hard as I preached sometimes. And I'd come out of there hour, two hours, three hours later, ringing, sopping wet after praying. And I told Dad, I said, Dad, something's going on. And I don't know what it is. I said, I go to pray. And I said, man, something just comes over me. And he said, well, take a tape recorder next time you do it and tape it. And uh, I said, well, I don't know. That sounds a little awkward there. But, you know, and uh, because he come home from work one day. And I was sitting in his recliner reading the Bible. And um, honest to the Lord, but this is what happened. It may not happen to you that way, but I was sitting there and said, Lord, you've got something for me in my life. And I've been praying just, you know, I was young, didn't have as much responsibility I had now, so I spent a lot of time praying. And I said, Lord, would you speak to me in your word what, what you want me to do? I know you want me to do something. Lord, what do you want me to do? I flipped that Bible open, shut my eyes, put my fingers there, and it said, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time shall come when men shall not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap unto themselves teachers having itch and ears who turn away from the truth. I took that, I stuck it in my heart. I believed it as much as I believed. I said, Dad, God just spoke to me. And told me I was going to preach. He said, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so he goes on and does his thing. And then I tell him about the prayer. And, and within a month or so, uh, I took over a youth group. And we, I don't know how many we had saved. We started having youth night. We started running more people on youth night than we had on regular church service. Those people started coming on youth night to see what was going on. They were falling in the floor, getting filled with the Holy Ghost. And uh, just some wonderful experience. Yesterday has some wonderful experiences. Don't dwell on your bad. Don't dwell on your fail failures. Think about the good things that God has given you. Remember the failures that you don't that you don't do the same thing and fail today. Let's build today 
We've got building blocks from yesterday. Let's build a better today than we had yesterday, and that'll make our tomorrows much better. Amen? Amen. Amen. We need to thank him that we can trust him with our tomorrows because they're in his hand anyway. Amen? Amen? Amen. Tomorrow's filled with a lot of gloom, but remember we have the promise that he's coming back for us. And we know who holds tomorrow, That's right. so let's trust him Amen. until the end. Amen? Amen. Will you bow your heads with Amen. us tonight? Father God, we honor you, Lord, and we thank you that you speak to us through your word. Simple things that we look over many times, but speak volumes if we'll just pay attention. Simple words as Elijah when he said that days should speak. Days should speak, and we should listen. Our yesterdays speak to all of us. All of our yesterdays, my yesterdays different than somebody else's, but we need to learn from our yesterday. Learn what we didn't do we should have done. Learn what we did that we shouldn't have done. And let's make a better today. And let's look forward to tomorrow because God has great and precious promises for each of his people. Though there may be dark days, you'll never forsake us even to the end of the world. We love you today and honor you. And I pray, Lord, that somebody somewhere will receive some strength from this word today by your spirit. We ask in Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen.